Everybody has their quirks. It's what keeps life interesting. But what if those quirks started to border on the bazaar? What would you do? On today's case, Ms. Block says she thought that she'd met the love of her life. That is, until her partner's increasingly unhinged conspiracy theories started to get in the way. From microchip implants to secret surgeries, Ms. Block says the only conspiracy that she can prove is Mr. Griffin's conspiracy to take advantage of her for the work she does for him and his refusal to buy her an actual engagement ring. Ms. Block says that if Mr. Griffin can't commit to making her his wife, then she may just have to close the book on this relationship for good. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Block versus Griffin. Thank you very much. Hello, Ms. Block and Mr. Griffin. Ms. Block, you're here in court today because you say you are at your wit's end with your boyfriend. You say his obsession with conspiracy theories and his lack of affection have you questioning if you want to continue in this relationship. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Griffin, you say you love Ms. Block and want to marry her, but you say you still have some issues to work out between the two of you and you're not ready to rush into anything. Yes, Your Honor. So now that we know what the issues are, let's figure out how we got here. Ms. Block, tell me why we're in court today. Well, it's been a long time. We've been together for about three years, and we, we've started kind of quasi living together, but I started working for him about a year and a half ago. I'm like his assistant, and that's kind of what our relationship has now just evolved to. I'm just his personal assistant rather than his lover. And where is this going? Like, he, you know, he gave me a ring. It was kind of a childish promise ring. It wasn't an engagement ring. And we're adults, and I don't want to waste any more time. He needs to make a decision. So you said what started off as friendship turned into a love affair, and now it seems like it's a business arrangement. You want exactly. clarity, is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Griffin, what about you? Your Honor, I was uh, kind of pressured into um, the engagement uh, ring. The ring was a gift, and at first had I had no intention of asking her to marry me um, at the time. So I gave her the ring as a gift, and then a couple of days later, uh, her mom notifies me or she says, uh, you know, congratulations on the engagement. And I was not aware of this. I had no idea. So you didn't and... get down on your knee and do the whole <laughs> will you marry me and I love you thing? No, Your Honor. Okay. So you so... went from a friendship to a lover to a fiancé, <laughs> and that last step you were not really prepared to take? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So then let's resolve where we are in the relationship. I'm going to turn to you, Ms. Block. Take me back to how the two of you met, because I'm curious how this friendship became more. I was part of a counseling group. I decided to change my life um, to stop drinking, and it worked, and I'm doing all the work. And I, that's how I met him. I was... so, as I, so then I'm clear, you were a part of some sort of addiction counseling group mm -hmm. because you were ready to make some changes in your life. Absolutely. Congratulations. How long have you been, let's just say, clean and sober? Three and a half years. You better go, girl. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. So you all met in this group, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And did you just become friends? We did become friends, but then we started hanging out more outside of the group, and that's how we kind of fell for each other. We had a lot of things in common. So let me just turn to Mr. Griffin real quick. Mr. Griffin, a part of this same group, how are you doing with uh, your addiction? So I, I was uh, continuing to use uh, after, you know, we started hanging out. Uh, but as of now, I have a year and a half. And I owe that, a lot of that, you know, to her. So how does it go from literally someone who cling together to accomplish a, a, a clear goal to now you're worried that the relationship isn't going anywhere. What has happened? There's something that happened in the very beginning. Like, we had just started kind of dating, and he had a friend come over, and this friend starts talking about a YouTube video, and it's like, the government is surveilling us with microchips, and they can implant them into you, and it's the mark of the beast. And then they went out to the park. I stayed home, and then I get a call a couple hours later from the police that I have to go and bail him out. We're driving home, I'm upset, and he's just kind of manic. And he starts talking about the police and the paramedics, and they took him to the hospital to implant microchips into him so they could surveil him. And I'm like, no, stop. That's what your friend was talking about. 
that's not real. So I think he just got very suggestible from his friend. While and it's something high. you really, yes, while high. What happened, Mr. Griffin, when you were in that park? Uh, well, yeah, me and my friend were hanging out. Um, we were getting, uh, you know, pretty rowdy. And the cops ended up getting called. And somewhere between uh, getting arrested and going to jail, I swear I was in some kind of medical facility and I was having something inserted into my forehead. But wait a minute, you were high. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I submitted pictures, because the next day, so, uh, there were no scars, there were no incision marks, but he's saying that there was a microchip here and here. But wait a minute, I want to I wanna make sure was, you were high, you know that, because you already yeah. told me. Yes, Your Honor. So now, what, so, what am I looking at, just so that I'm clear? <laughs> You're looking at where he claims there was a microchip the very next day. I took Polaroids instead of a digital picture, so I couldn't be accused of altering it or anything, because he's just going on and on that he's being surveilled. Okay. There's nothing there on the floor. Okay, Mr. Griffin, what makes you think you um, something was implanted? I, I just I, I saw it. So <laughs> what I saw, I, I, I you know I saw it. Meaning my... you have Regardless, a clear. Regardless, it was you... a traumatic experience. I, I listen. Right? It was. If this is what's causing the rift between you. Don't you want to try to evaluate why? Because, I mean, honestly, when you're high or drunk, you can sort of flip things in your mind. Would you at least grant me that? Absolutely, and I see a therapist. Okay. For, you know. So are you, do you really believe that the government planted something in your head? I mean, uh, sincerely. Si uh, sincerely, no, no. No, I don't. I get the feeling you've been using the microchip as a crutch to avoid real issues that are happening between the two of you. I, I, I get like backpedaling and I get like confusion. But Ms. Block, I'm trying to resolve thing. it because I can resolve it one way or the other. I want to know if there's a, the thing in his head. So let's do a test. Oh, finally, finally, finally. Wow, okay. Do you have a cell phone by any chance? Yes, Your Honor. You know that is a microchip, right? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> so if you have wireless internet or you have a mobile telephone, law enforcement um, and the government can track you. I guarantee you at any moment, you know, they know where you are. Yeah. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. None of us are that important that they want to put a microchip in our head. I mean. I just wonder if he's backing down or if he's nervous, because he talks about it so much. He'll talk about it when he's just sitting there. I'm like, what's going on? He's kind of moody and he's worried. He's worried that he's being surveilled or that he's gonna be set up by our city council for like a crime he didn't commit. That's, that's the big worry. That's what comes up. And it's been... Uh, it's Where's like the microchip supposed three or four to be? Months. At least where you thought Wouldn't it was. Wouldn't it be dissolved by now? Like it's been so long, even if it was real, even if they could do it, which they can't. The technology isn't there. When they've been dissolved. Well, why don't we they just be resolve it right now? We have the metal detectors behind, in my chambers, I think. Mm -hmm. Can you please <laughs> sure. retrieve the metal uh, detectors? Your Honor. Because, see, I, I have can prove metal it. in my wrist, and it's not going to go off in the metal detector. Why not? I have 10 screws and a plate in my wrist. Okay. It's titanium. So and it doesn't go off in metal detectors. It does not go off in right. metal detectors? So I'm just saying, if, if you can't find it because of the wand, which, you know, I already, you know, I already realized that it's, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't an accurate depiction of what happened that night. I get the feeling you've been using the microchip as a crutch to avoid real issues that are happening between the two of you. Mm. Yes. Because the moment I start to ask you about it and ask logical questions, you respond to me in a logical way, which does not suggest someone that believes that they have been implanted by the government or the police with a microchip. Yes, no longer, Your, Your Honor. I no longer believe that. See, this is where I get with him. I, I, I get, like, backpedaling, and I get, like, confusion. But, Ms. Block, I'm trying to resolve thing. it, because I can resolve it one way or the other. Because <laughs> I can put it. my metal detector oh, on myself. I know I have it. I know I have metal in my chest. I want to know if there's a, the thing in his head. Like, I, I want to know. Yeah, you yeah. can do it if you like. Let me see. I had open-heart surgery. I want to make sure it works. <laughs> Wow, oh. okay. Wow. Yeah, we know that it works. <laughs> that's how they put my Please, chest back together. Yes. So we know it works there, oh. okay? This oh, and I took my pen off, so you know it didn't have deep. anything to do. My nice lizard came off, okay? All right. Ready? So let's, All right. Let's, let's, let's do a test. Oh. 
Finally, finally, finally. Mm hmm. Okay, we don't have it. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Check his what, wrist. Yeah, what about my wrist? Ah. Oh, See, there's metal. Does there's metal. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing. It See? doesn't go off in, in uh, like the airport. But that's why I'm telling you, I have the real deal Holyfield. Yeah, I'm not can. up here in, in the fakey. So I'm the, telling you. So for the record, titanium beeps, just so you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So you can stop with that part, because it does Finally. beep. We know. No beeping. I know for certain that it works, because I, I know what was used to put me back together. So I'm telling you, uh, and you don't have anything in here. We I hope you have know. something in here, but we don't think it's metal. How's that? <laughs> That's a good thing. I'd like to get past this. I'd like to not hear about it again. And I'd like to move on to what are the other issues. Ask her about the twerking online. The I who? Mean, the, and what? The lies, the lies about twerking online. And OK, now this has taken a left turn. <laughs> her work was Tarot cards. At first... Tarot cards and pole dancing. What are you selling? A performance. So you are a pole dancing, twerking, tarot card reader. She yes. lied, and that's what was yes. the problem. Baby, that's a it. business card for you. <laughs> <laughs>
I have the problem with the lying. Why did she? Why did she lie? It was going to come out eventually. If you wanted to marry me, well, I was kind of like, easing you into it. Out. I guess. Wait a minute. You didn't know that she was a pole dancing tarot card twerking. No, I knew that <laughs> um, she was performance like performance artist. I knew that she pole danced. He didn't. Right? I didn't know that she was, you know, a cam girl. Non-nude versus nudity. Right. Right. Yeah. But that is something that you do need to share with your partner. Yes, yeah. I was easing him into it. There's no ease and into yeah. naked pole dance working <laughs> tarot card reading. <laughs> right. Right. Let me cut to the chase. What do you want? Yeah, I want a wedding. We have all the components to have something good. If we could be a little bit less messy. You both are still in recovery. Mm -hmm. What makes you think that this is the time to connect your lives together when your individual lives need some help. This is true. Your Honor, I made it clear at the beginning that I was in no, at no point to be, you know, uh, to, to, to provide emotional support, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to anybody. But then he pushes a lot of affection. He was the first person to say, I love you. But you that know? doesn't and mean I'm ready to get married. Right. So he's, he's giving me mixed messages. No, he's not, Miss Block. <laughs> You're just not hearing. Because I'm telling you right now, the man is being as honest as he can be when it comes to, I'm not ready. You have to hear that. Yes. Mr. Griffin, have you said I'm not ready to her outside of this courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. He said it very clearly to me. Robert, did you hear it? I heard it. Mr. Griffin is not ready to be married. Mr. Griffin wants to work on himself. Mr. Griffin is only 18 months sober. Any additional pressure on Mr. Griffin right now could jeopardize that sobriety, mm -hmm. okay? Mr. Griffin is in therapy. There was clearly some incident, some trauma that made him have to come up with a whole psychological right. situation. Don't you think we need to evaluate that? Don't you think he needs time to figure that out? Don't ask okay. this man to come and be a part of a full-time monogamous couple until he can be a whole individual by himself. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you this ring back. I, I can't. And but that's, wait a and minute, that's why here's we're my here. question. And that's why we're here. I just can't anymore. We have all the components to have something good. But it's like we're choosing not, not to do it. But Miss, Miss, Miss Block, rarely do I say to a litigant, hold on just a second. Why are you pushing so hard? What's going on with you? I that just... you need to push so hard to get married to somebody who clearly is not ready. He makes it very clear that I'm the one. He makes it very clear that he wants me there all the time, that he wants me there cooking with him and going to meetings with him and like paint, going to paint class and golfing. We do so much together. And then, and then the other times he's like, I'm not available, I'm not emotionally available. Right, but we're together yeah. all the time. You're so what is it? You're yeah, exactly. And if, I'm, if that's all I am, then it has to stop. It just has to end here. Miss Block? This is the best thing I could ever say to you. Say that phrase again. <laughs> My, needs My needs have changed. changed. Right. You need more. I do. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you turning to Mr. Griffith and saying, not just in work, mm -hmm. but in life. My needs have changed. Right. And you're not available to be his assistant. And if he's not ready to be your husband, then you're ready to find somebody who is. Right. That is what you need to say. I'm gonna have to just give you this. Yeah. Because I can't I mean, hold on to it. So Were we just a pandemic relationship? Yeah. Two years of pressure and now it's over? I wasn't, I wasn't ready for a relationship. I think he knew that the gig was up. Right. And, you know, especially once I start to right, wand yeah, myself, yeah. Yeah. I figured, Let's just put this to rest so that we can get to the real core of the problem. And the core of the problem is he doesn't want to marry her. No, no, he, he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. And her needs have changed, mm -hmm. so let's go home. Please. Thank you. <gasps>